Hey everybody, it's your Survivor buddy Gordon Holmes here with your exit interview for Survivor 45, episode 11, the 12th person eliminated. Talking to Emily in just a minute. Before we get into that, a couple of quick orders of business. First of all, I'm still under the weather, so if I break into some coughing fits, I apologize in advance. If my nose starts bleeding, someone let me know. I'd appreciate that. Um, uh, also, my graphic novel is available, The Bad Guy available on Legacy Comics. Uh, if you enjoy me, if you enjoy this content, if you want to support the channel, it's a great way to do it. Only five bucks. It's a wonderful story. It's about pro wrestling, but it's really about marriage and life and love. It's a bit of a tearjerker. Uh, check it out if you're so inclined. Uh, also, the Survivor Power Rankings every Monday with Franny Marin. Check them out. Franny's doing such a good job, has such great insight. Uh, also, every Wednesday on Substack. Again, I'll put the link down below. Uh, my Survivor Recaps. Uh, of every episode along with grades for each of the, the remaining players uh also if you enjoy this content uh hit that thumbs up button uh subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell all those things uh get us in front of more and more people and the more and more people that see us the more and more fun stuff we can do and if you have already i super appreciate that uh with that being said let's see what emily has to say about last night's elimination uh emily what what what, what why won't you guys split the votes <laughs> Thank you, thank you for asking that question initially, because that's the question everybody should be asking. And the answer is because I'm an idiot, because I'm an <laughs> idiot. And I was not thinking, obviously, I wish I'd gone back and split the votes. Um, I remember at the time, I thought that the Reba idol was flush with Sifu. Um, so I didn't think that Julie had an idol. I knew Austin had his amulet. Um, so I figured the worst that she could do was play her shot in the dark. And when she initially stood up, I thought she was playing her shot in the dark. So when the idol came out, I was genuinely so shocked. And the moment she pulled out her idol, I knew I was going home. Um, so to this day, she just put the vote. That's the lesson. <laughs> you don't need 13 votes to send Caleb home. Like that's what I was like, come on guys, killing me, You're killing me. Yeah, for actually, you know, I think the context behind something that that's missing and there should be a lot of credit given to the Reba Alliance for this was they were playing such a loyal game that the aspect of you do what you say you're going to do, and if you don't, you're dead to us, kind of, that was really powerful. And I think that for those of us that were kind of trying to navigate from the bottom, um, there was a real big fear that if you threw a rogue vote onto somebody, um, you were going to be the person that Reba perceived as not loyal, right? And then you made yourself that easy target next. So there, I think there's a lot of um, like fear-based decision-making that was going on during tribal councils up to that point, myself included, for not wanting to be the person who there was a rogue vote. Um, so yeah, I think that was kind of like the thought process. Yeah, we were all blown away by the Bruce move last week. The fact that you managed to get him to not play his idol and he gives you full credit. Um, you, so what went into that? Cause I feel like it, 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 what they're showing us is you doing amazing jury work and that someone like, you know, coach from South Pacific would be like, oh no, 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 I'll work with you when he didn't intend to. Whereas you, it felt like you were giving them the truth, but not lying to them as far as like, we'll figure it out. You're like, it's not best for my game. Can you walk me through that, your thought process as far as, you know, getting Bruce to not play the idol as well as, you know, kind of closing yeah. up to future jury members? Now, obviously I'm sitting here now, so we can debate all day whether or not that was a good or a bad move. And to this day, I still don't know how I feel about that decision. Um, so I, I won't rehash it, but I will say um, there was a moment where we're having this conversation with with Bruce and we're trying to get this plan out um, where I was like, maybe maybe I could do this. Maybe this could happen. And I never felt strong enough of my relationship with the other Bella people to really make that a reality. But my thought process was I was playing really under the thumb of, of the Reba group. And I wanted something on my resume that was my own because I didn't feel like I had that, especially given the fact that nobody was on the Lulu tribe. I mean, Caleb was there, but he's, he's sitting on the jury, right? So I, I'm I didn't feel like I had autonomy or respect for people. And I thought this was something that maybe I can actually pull off that can be mine. Um, and then I got insecure about it. It worked and I come back to camp and I'm trying to explain to Julie like why it was her name as opposed to other people. And that really comes back to, to bite me in the butt in the sense that I've, you know, my insecurity about all that is results in me kind of like being like, give me credit, give me credit, you know? Um, and that's you never the way you want to play Survivor. Um, there's a lot of mistakes made. I think that's one of them. Okay. It, it seems like Reba, it seems like their problem seems to be they all have different final threes. You know, it seems like D wants Julie and Austin and Austin wants, you know, Drew and D. Uh, did you think you were in any of their final threes? Do you think that it was possible that Drew might have made you uh, one of his final three? Yes. So we had actually had lots of conversations, um, at, even at the old Bellow tribe. So when we had the tribe swap, I mean, Austin and Drew came to me and said, um, the reason why I kept saying, oh, Bella has the numbers is because Austin Drew came to me and said, Reba's fractured, but we have the girls. Like we have Julie, we have D. Um, and like they, so I knew that they're always working together, but I was hopeful that they saw the threat that was Julie and D and they'd be more willing to work with me as somebody who came across as potentially kind of abrasive, 
as somebody who they could go to the final three with and beat. So I was hopeful that maybe they would be willing to go with me. And, you know, the truth was I was totally willing to go with both of them, even though I think there were probably easier final threes. Um, I think, you know, I was, my thought process at the time was that I could make a more distinctive argument for myself because my game was, was so different than theirs. Uh, in the premiere, I'll, I'll misquote this, but you famously said, I want to win or I want to be out first. Um, and it seems like you gained so much from your 12th place finish. First of all, I hate the word 12th. <laughs> I hate the word 12th. <laughs> something about four me consonants, too now. Right? Something, right, right? something about four consonants in, the rows, in a row just like completely throws me off. Uh, what did you gain? Um, you know, like, obviously, I, I, I imagine this changed your perspective from, from where we saw you in the premiere. Yeah, I, I gained a lot. And I understand where I was coming from. My thought process headed into this was I didn't need to starve on an island for a month to prove something to myself. I, I didn't need to go on TV to prove something to myself. I wanted a million dollars. And if I couldn't get a million dollars, and I want to go home and I want to help my boyfriend move into the house because I was, I was, you know, what I perceived to be like a really big sacrifice. So my thought process was, you know, I'm doing this for a million dollars. And that's really it. And um, I still think that the point of the game is still to win, right? Like everybody still wants to win. But I definitely did not ex expect the amount of change and just perspective that you can get in such a short period of time. And um, I have now a level of, of painful self-awareness coming out of this experience that I really never expected to get. And more importantly, I have 17 new best friends, like people who are some of the best people I've ever met in my life who have been so kind and generous with me. So like the whole experience, I sound like so sappy saying that, but it really has been much more different than I ever expected it to be. Okay. Now you've mentioned him twice now. Is he, uh, um, is he, is he still your boyfriend? <laughs> still right now, still technically boyfriend. I don't know. I, I don't know if we call ourselves engaged. We have not got into the organizational planning part of it yet. But the first thing I did when I got back from Survivor is, uh, you know, we went and got bagels. And Eric has always told me, you know, we've been together for so long. And he's just like, whenever you're ready, I, I'm ready. Um, and I've always just kind of dragged my feet, I think, and said, you know, I, it's an aspect of my life. I said it, you know, like a wife, I, that word, it, it means something different, I think, to a lot of people than it means to myself. And um, I was fine just with our relationship the way it was, but uh, nothing like a little bit of perspective to really remind you what's important in life. So when I came back and I sat down, I was like, oh, I think I'm, I think I'm ready now, you know, um, so we'll get there. But again, we're, you know, kind of in the, we're heading in that direction, but Survivor has taken up all of our time. So after this ends, I'm looking forward to actually getting from direction to like organization on it. This is my ode to you, by the way. That this is this. Is I my love car. it. I have my I have a coffee cup here. Now I feel like right. I'm, I'm not up to snuff. Look at the legs on this Gatorade. That's a that's a wine <laughs> term. I'm told legs. Um, what was his reaction watching that uh, testimonial uh, last week? Oh, he. So we knew it was potentially coming. I didn't think I would necessarily get it. So I was a little surprised that they included it. Um, but he obviously knew about it before it happened. And I think he was having a good laugh, um, you know, at the half drunk conversation. But also he loved reading comments about himself on the Internet. It was, you know, he was having a good laugh of it. Yeah, we love it. Do what's right for you, Emily, though. Don't let anybody talk <laughs> in anything you want to do. Uh, we do a word association here to get to know your tribe mates a little bit better. I'll give you someone's name. Give me the first word, a couple words that pop in your head. And you... We're on a tribe with everybody, uh, if, I, if I did my research correctly. So this might take a while. Uh, let's start off with Katura. Okay, I have to say this first. Do you want me to give real answers? Because you know I'm just going to give platitudes. I don't want everyone to hate me. So I feel like all of my words are going to be nice words, right? <laughs> give, us, give me the meanest words you have. Oh, no. <laughs> it's been so long. Classic Survivor. I can't do it. It's like jerk, a-hole, blah, blah, blah. And everybody now is like inspiring charming so whatever you're comfortable with but let, let's uh, let's let's with, with katura i'm gonna go with cunning for katura which i feel like perfectly balances nice but also a little bit savage <laughs> okay uh, let's try hannah hannah genuine d oh savage sifu fun uh Savaya. literally the nicest person in the whole fucking world sorry i know that's not a word but i just feel like that needs to be known there's no wrong answers here. Uh, let's try Jay Maya. Oh, um, talented. Caleb. Surprising. Boston. Uh, hungry. Brandon. Oh, best. Brando. <laughs> Brando. Wrong. Okay. Uh, Kelly. Uh, competitive. Kendra. Generous. Sean. Cheekbones. Uh, Bruce. They are nice. Forgiving. Okay. Drew. Oh, 
smart. Uh, what lame word? Oh, sorry, uh, Drew. <laughs> oh, oh, she called me smart. What a jerk. Uh, <laughs> let's try Jake. Um, oh, kind. Okay, we'll finish off with Julie. Oh, um, I think everybody has given this word, but I'm not steal it. Badass. Okay. Uh, last night during your uh, voting testimonial, you said Julie was likely to get your vote. Um, what of her game, based uh, you know, compared to everybody else, has you willing to to write her name on that parchment? Yeah. So it's funny. I was really focused on D up into um, the ability when I had the reward challenge, and all of us girls got together and we were sitting around drinking and eating. And I got to learn a little bit more because you know we never really had the chance to sit down and talk before. So I got a little bit more perspective about Julie's game, and I realized that she was way more involved in that decision making, pulling some of the strings like behind the scenes than I realized. So that was about the point where I was like, you know, I'd been so focused on D as this threat, as a strategic threat, that I was like, wow. Julie, not only is she contributing to their strategic decisions, but she is also so underestimated. And there's something really scary about somebody who is willing to be so underestimated, like calling herself mama, you know, doing the stuff that makes you have like lower expectations only when she's kind of like masterminding, you know? So that was kind of like my thought process, like, man, you're kind of doing a lot. I'm scared of you now. <laughs> uh, on, on day one, when you went after Bruce at the, uh, the drop off, how long did it take you to realize that that might not, not have been the best move? Oh, you know what? Longer than you probably expect, maybe like days. So <laughs> for context, I, you know, I didn't really have a strategy coming on and, you know, Jeff was asking questions to everybody about Bruce and everybody was being really kind. Like, I love the fact that Bruce is here, all the stuff. He comes to me and he asks me how I feel. And I'm like, I have to play devil's advocate. So I give like what I think is a very like fair assessment that he could have an advantage from his past experience. Um, the process is kind of taxing. He has relationships and all that stuff. Um, and then he kind of turns around this response and ends up being really kind of directive and authoritative. And it was a kind of proving the point that I was making. And so then I retort back to his retort. I knew what the worst part is. I was proud of myself. I was <laughs> proud of myself. I was like, oh, I won that argument. <laughs> and then I realized, oh crap, it's not about winning an argument on a barge that even matters. It's about, I don't know, winning survivors. So um, it took me a little bit, but obviously I did at some point realize that was stupid and the fact that i was not the first boot was sheer luck because i deserve to go home for that now, now heading into this i know we're, we're running short on time heading into this if i had said to you these four words emily flippin fan favorite uh what would your reaction have been um shock shock all i really the the reality is somewhere in the middle i know everybody hated me initially now everybody loves me the reality is somewhere in the middle um i i i would, I would not call myself a fan favorite i would also not call myself like the worst villain ever i think i'm just a person who showed different aspects of her personality at rather inopportune times. And um, I'm thankful that the edit has been so nice to me. And I'm thankful for the support, but it, the whole experience has been weird and jarring and I'm just ready to go back to normal life now. Well, Emily, I think you're a rock star. I think you had some great moments out there that Bruce thing blew my mind. So cheers <laughs> to you, my friend. Thank you, cheers.